Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Reaction Time. I'm Jacqueline Cordova. I just realized it doesn't have our names. We're going to have to yell at Aiden. Uh oh, Aiden. <laughs> um, welcome back, That's guys. Yeah. yeah. As you can see, <laughs> we are at the studio, but we are recording from separate rooms again because Aiden is unfortunately, but fortunately for him, he's attending the men's basketball game uh, with our fearless boss, Chris Williams. So Aiden is having fun. Yes, as you can see, decorated the office with his family. Um They'll be up in names. So Ben and I are in studio recording virtually just from different rooms. Can you hear me speaking from the other room? No, I can't. I can't hear you through the wall. Okay. So. Good, good walls here in the studio. That's right. Built right. Um, yep. Yep. Uh, it's March. It's officially March. We are, if you're listening to this podcast the day it comes out, it would be Thursday. So we're one, essentially like one day away from the big mm -hmm. 12 uh championships we've we've been thinking of this day all season <laughs> it's like it's like we talk about it all season and then we tell ourselves oh let's not wish the season away but now now we're here <laughs> then it arrives it's like oh my gosh it's christmas it's wrestling <laughs> christmas and it's the best time of the year it is i have uh i need to bust out my yearly gifts of david carr and willie Mickless saying it, that it's the best time of the year. So, mm -hmm. but Iowa State takes off Thursday afternoon for Tulsa and I will head down to Tulsa on Friday and action starts on Saturday at 10 a.m. And it's, mm -hmm. it's basically, what did Dresser say? It's like you, or was it, who said it? You work for this all season or you dream of this all season, right? That's how he yeah. said. He said mm -hmm. something along those yep. lines, so. Yeah, we're basically there. We're at the almost at the finish line of what everyone's been working towards. So Ben and I are going to go wait by wait. We're going to preview what Iowa State's got cooking this weekend. Um, ben, before we go wait by wait, what are your initial feelings going into this weekend? Uh, my initial feelings are um, Chris Andriga, who is wonderful. Um, He's, I don't actually know what his job is. I'm pretty sure he's a contracted worker for Iowa State. Um, but he is the biggest wealth of knowledge about like every sports statistic that exists. And um, he tweeted out a couple days ago that um, just based off of seeding and math, right now, Iowa State and Oklahoma State will tie 126.5 to 126.5 um to be the big 12 co-champions missouri i think is like 121 um so if you go just strictly based off math if everything goes exactly how the brackets say they will um iowa state and oklahoma state will come out tied and I'm, that's not gonna happen but i think the greater point to that is iowa state has seven first round matches this year and last mm -hmm. year i think they only had like two or three so Iowa State was out of the team race before the team race even began. Um, and so for people who are new to wrestling or haven't followed necessarily, or even weren't sure last year why this was the case, um, in the Big 12, you the buys are totally random. It's not like a one seed gets a buy and the four seed wrestles. Like it's totally random who gets buys and who doesn't. And um, if you wrestle the first round, you're able to get team points. If you get a buy, there are no team points available to earn. So last year, Iowa State only had two first round matches. I had two to three. I think it was two though. Mm -hmm. um, so they could only score a couple team points in that first round. Meanwhile, Missouri had, I think, nine first round matches. So right there alone, if it's all decisions, which they weren't, that's a seven point difference right off the bat. Um, and generally those first round matches, like Jackie and I are going to get into here pretty quick, are opportunities for bonus points. So the fact that Iowa State and Oklahoma State have a similar number of first round uh, matches is huge for the team race. It sounds like Missouri has fewer first round. I haven't, I didn't count theirs, um, but they have fewer first round matches this year. Now they're they're the reverse of what they were last year. They're on the outside looking in, where they're going to have to greatly outperform um, to be in the team race. So um, that's my high 
my initial impressions, my high view of things mm-hmm. um, is right now that looks like we're going to have a really tight team race and it's going to be really, really fun to watch. Well, in, in the past, Iowa State, like you said, they just haven't really gotten – they haven't been given any favors per se. Mm-hmm. When you look at Missouri getting first round matches and Iowa State getting none, so it is. I'm sure Coach is very excited. He made a comment about how he didn't make like a super strong comment about it, but I mean, he has to be feeling really good to have the opportunity to have, you know, guys who can score those bonus points up first. Because yeah, that just really sucked last season. So. I am very curious how this team race is going to go. Um, and at availability, Dresser <laughs> made a joke, or not a joke, made a statement in response to Ben bringing up how just in predictions it it could result in a tie. And he mm-hmm. was like, we, we're not trying to wrestle for a tie. And, <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. That would suck to finally get a trophy and you have to share it. And it just reminded me of when Oklahoma State somehow – ended up having to share with Oklahoma when we Mm -hmm. didn't expect Oklahoma to do well. So yeah, that was, that's still the most ridiculous tournament I've ever seen from any one team (laughs) because they pinned everybody. It was Mm -hmm. unbelievable. It's like, what is happening right now? And they go to the NCAs fresh off of a co big, co big 12 championship. And they were terrible that NCAA year. And vivid were like, how are you so good for that one weekend? And then, tr- like, truly bad the whole rest of the year, and then at the NCAA. So, I just, I guess any team can get hot, but um, yeah, that was ridiculous. So, yeah, we don't want to share. That's not what we're here for. We want, and David Carr wants, he said this since he was a freshman, I want to win a Big 12 team championship. Uh, and they're going to have that opportunity. Yeah, no, for sure. I think Iowa State looks really good this season, like, probably the best they've looked in a long time, at least since we've been covering uh, Kevin Dresser. Um, So yeah, no, let's do it. Let's get into it. Um, So 125, (laughs) Kaisen Tarakina. Dresser today, well, I guess yesterday, if you're listening to this on Thursday, um, basically said that Kaisen is looking the best he's looked since November. Mm -hmm. And It sounds like they put him through a gauntlet in the practice room. Sounds like they made him wrestle off. Sounds like he had some tough practices to kind of make up for, you know, just some of the stuff that's gotten in the way of him being able to compete. Um, I think the biggest thing with Kaisen is if his head's on straight, then I think he can wrestle well, which we have said several times, he has the talent to wrestle well. He, Mm -hmm. He should be able to. Um, have a good tournament but just from the past few weeks I just don't know what Kaisen Tarakin is gonna show up you know so right I'm just kind of I'm going into this weekend when it comes to Kaisen I'm just hoping to see a first good first match like his first matchup I want to see him do well for me to feel confident that he'll have a good tournament yeah I like Kaisen's draw for the most part like he has a path honestly to the finals and I shouldn't say that we've seen Kyson this year we've seen him struggle against guys he should beat without question um but I guess part of me still stuck on I've seen what he can do um so his first round match is against Conrad Hendrickson from Oklahoma who he beat in sudden victory um Conrad's one of those guys who's I mean he's 125 so he's obviously short but he's just a short, stocky guy who's really hard to score on. Um, so that's going to be really a good first test for Kyson. Um, I think that's going to tell us a lot about what his tournament is. Because if he goes out there shooting, trying to score, even if you don't necessarily succeed, succeed on all your shots, if you're out there trying and um, getting those attempts in, I think that bodes well for his tournament. Because if he does that, I think he beats him. Um, I hopefully, hopefully he doesn't go to sudden victory, but I think he beats him. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he's out there attacking, and then he's got Steve O, likely Steve O. Poulin from Northern Colorado, who I think that is that's a winnable match for Kyson. Um, and then in the semifinals, he'd get Troy Spratley from Oklahoma State, who when they wrestled earlier this year, it was four to two. Troy Spratley won, but when you watch that match, Kyson should have won that match. Like that was this was 
not peak Kyson. This was anti-peak Kyson where he was just not doing anything in the middle of the year. It's like, Kyson, you're better than this. Like, give more effort, shoot more shots. Why are we in these close matches with guys that you look like you're better than? Um, so if he gets Troy Spratley again, and if he looks as good as Coach Dresser says he does right now, um, there's – okay, I am setting everyone up for disappointment. There's a shot that Kyson gets to the finals. <laughs> <laughs> like if he wrestles well, like if he went in there, like the Kaisen Tarakino we saw who competed against Wisconsin, he could be in the yep. finals. Exactly. Like, and that's what Dresser said, because uh, when Dresser said he looked as good as he has since November, and that's when they wrestled Wisconsin. That's when he beat Eric Barnett, who's currently like number five or number four in the country. He beat him by major decision. Um, so if Kaisen's head is on straight, he can be in the finals. Now, that said, Kyson is the sixth seed. Um, the Big 12 had six allocations for 125, meaning that Kyson would have to finish in the top six to earn an NCAA automatic qualifying spot. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking with some people earlier today, and we kind of came to the conclusion that Kyson is not going to get in at large um, because there's going to be some, like there is every March, some upsets of some guys who you don't expect to lose. Um, there's going to be some guys probably in the big 10 who, uh, might tweak something and then medical forfeit out of the tournament. And those guys will get the at large spots and Kyson won't because Kyson is at the very bottom of the list of getting that automatic qualifier spot or the allocation spot. So, uh, Kyson does need to earn an automatic qualifying spot. He needs to finish in the top six. He is seated number six. So he needs to wrestle two seed, and that's way harder than a lot of people think, I think, including myself. Um, so there's a, a path for Kyson to be in the finals. There's also a path where he's on the outside looking in. Both those yeah. things are a very real possibility because like he went to sudden victory against this guy in the dual meet. Who's to say it doesn't go the other way this time? Uh, he could lose his first round matchup and have to wrestle all the way back to try to finish six. So um, Kyson, I mean... Neither Jackie nor I knows. I'm not even sure Coach Dresser knows, which I think kills him, what Kyson we're going to get. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not even sure Kyson knows. Um, but it's up to him. He's the one that controls his fate. So um, mm -hmm. we'll see what he can do. But uh, he there's a whole range of possibilities for him. I'll say <laughs> that. Yeah, I agree. I That's kind of the theme I think of when I think of him is he controls his own destiny. And unfortunately for him this season, all of the upsets, like it's 125 is wide open. And that wide means open. there's just a lot of guys that are really, really, really trying for that top spot at 125. So it's just kind of stacked against him because everybody else is wrestling really well. So, mm -hmm. but I'm curious to see how he, you know, he tackles it. It's a, I mean, a tournament's grueling. So we'll just have to, have to wait and see on that one. So, yep. but at 133, Evan Frost, a freshman, what a season for him. Um, Dresser said that if you had asked him at the beginning of the season, if we thought or just said like, hey, we think Evan Frost is going to be, um, Gosh, what what is he seated number two? Number number two. Yep. Um, he would have thought we. He said he would have bet us a lot of money. Yep. <laughs> that Evan wouldn't <laughs> have been uh, the number two seed, not because of lack of talent, but because I mean he's a freshman. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, this isn't necessarily what you predict for some of these guys, unless you're walking in like I don't know David Carr. So um, I'm excited for Evan. I think his quiet and like very laid back demeanor will be so fun to see how it translates in a tournament setting. And um, unfortunately for him, he is at 133, which is Dayton fix. And I anticipate Dayton fix winning that weight. But if yep. you end up in the finals against Dayton fix, you're doing something right. So I'm excited. Yeah, for that'd be, that would be a phenomenal tournament if he yeah. did end up in the finals against fix. Um, and as the two seed, you have that path. Mm -hmm. Um, like his first rank matchup is against Hunter Leak of Cal Baptist, who is 14 and six on the year. Um, I don't think Cal Baptist has wrestled anyone of note besides like Iowa State, maybe a couple others. So, like, I don't know that they're battle tested. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And then in the semifinals, you'd either get Cade Moore of Missouri um, or Dominic Serrano from Northern Colorado. And is Cade Moore the one that got injured in the stabbing? I believe so. I'm pretty sure it is. At this point, um, I'll just look it up. There are some people whose eyebrows just raised to the top of their head right now. Like someone got stabbed. Yeah. Cade Moore was breaking up a fight and got stabbed. Yes. Um, so we don't know what kind of shape he's in. He's entered in the tournament, which is great. That's great to see. He did not wrestle. He's one of the few Missouri guys I'm confident was not ducking. <laughs> yeah. He definitely was not ducking. He just got stabbed. So, um, he's going to be interesting to see what that matchup against Dominic Serrano. Um, and that's going to be a tough semifinal match, whether it's Dominic or Cade Moore for Evan Frost. But at that point, if you're in the semifinals, again, the big 12 uh, has six allocation spots at 133. If you're in the semifinals, you're finishing in the top six. So mm -hmm. um, that'd be a qualifying and that'd be great. But we, as Iowa state fans, if you're an Iowa state fan, um, a you're rooting for Dominic Serrano in that Cade Moore match. Mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure Missouri doesn't score too many team points. But you want Evan Frost in that finals against Dayton Fix, um, just in terms of team points. And that, there's a path There's a path yeah. to it. Um, and we've seen Evan Frost. He's been not, He is almost the anti-Kyson Terakina. He has been <laughs> the most – one of the most consistent wrestlers in, in Iowa State's lineup. Like, you know exactly what you're going to get from him. And what you're getting is a very, very good wrestler. So, um Evan Frost has a path to the finals and it's a much more realistic one than Kyson probably. Yeah. And like I, like we've talked about, Evan is just such a cool, calm, collected guy that he flies under the radar. So mm -hmm. I really don't think anyone, or maybe they are, I don't know, but I feel like people are kind of sleeping on him. And, and they, the team said this at uh, media mm -hmm. day, when I asked media everyone, day, everybody, and it hasn't changed. <laughs> everybody said it's the frost twins. It's the frost twins. Well, Evan has been, I bet you plenty of those guys have not even thought much about Evan when they look at the um, like brackets or rankings or anything. I just, he's not very showy, but he goes in and he does it with ease. And yeah, like I said, I'm excited to see how this plays out for him. Cause does it with ease. And like he scores bonus points. And like, that's the thing that it was like, how doesn't he get more credit? Because it's not like he's winning by like, uh seven to three decision or something like that like he's getting bonus points against some decent wrestlers like that you and i kid mm -hmm. that guy is ranked in, like number in the top 20 and he tech fought him twice this year right uh so no he's um uh, yeah he's something special he is and i i hope he comes out of his shell a little more but that's all right he's a freshman we'll let it pass right now <laughs> yeah um, at 141, Anthony Echemendia, he's also been someone who I think has kind of, in a way, also kind of flown under the radar. Like he's just been very consistently good, consistently progressed over the season. And I feel like now where we are right now, it's when we're seeing him really come out of his shell. He's way more comfortable. I think him and Casey's friendship really blooming and how they've mm -hmm. been there for each other's teammates has I think really empowered Anthony to feel like he's part of the team, like he's an important member of the team, you know, and I feel like that's what we're seeing. And I think that's going to come into, um, into play, especially because Anthony, someone who's competed, dresser said it, right. He's used to this. He's competed in tournaments. He's done freestyle. Like this isn't a foreign space for him. So I think if anything, we're going to see him thrive because this is something he's used to. He's been in, I feel like it'll be like riding a bike, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for his. I think his draw also um, is a positive one in that I can very much see him in the finals. Yeah. And this is to me, and like, I, mean, I just fell into my own trap of looking past Evan Frost and his bonus point potential, because I was going to say, this is where the fun begins for Iowa State, because Anthony Echemendia, his first two matches, mm -hmm. bonus points for sure. And like I look back at Evan Frost, I was like, oh yeah, he's probably getting bonus points that first match too. Maybe the second one. Mm -hmm. um, but like Anthony, we've seen him go out and score a ton of points. And his first match is against Garrett, and I can't pronounce his last name, Kuchin, probably <laughs> of Air Force. And um, it, I'm glad he's going to Air Force because Anthony's going to send him for a ride. He's going <laughs> to toss him on his head. 
uh, and he's not going to have a fun time. Um, the second match is against Cole Brooks from Wyoming, number eight seed. I mm-hmm. They haven't wrestled this year, but I see bonus points for sure in that match. Um, and then after that, you probably have Jordan Titus from West Virginia, who Anthony beat. So I have no problems with that match. And then this is where Iowa State fans need to be you and I fans. Like, as much as you're rooting for Iowa State this weekend, this match or this bracket at 149 or 141, Iowa State fans need to be huge Kale Happel fans. Yeah. Um, Kale Happel's the third seed for Northern Iowa. Um, and in his second round match, he's I mean, he has to win his first round match, which he will. Um, but in the second round match, he's going to get Josh Edmond from Missouri. We need Cal Happel to win that match. Make sure Missouri's not getting points they don't deserve. Um, <laughs> that's not true. If you win a match, you deserve those points. Um, but, but we- then he's also <laughs> going to have Tejan Jamison um, from Oklahoma State in the semifinals. And again, that's one where if Kel Happel can win that match and prevent Oklahoma State from getting any points um, at that weight or getting to the finals, that's huge for Iowa State in the team race. So Anthony Echemendia has a clear path to the finals um, with a couple bonus points along the way, likely. Mm-hmm. And then if Kel Happel can get the job done against Missouri and likely Oklahoma State, uh, that bodes really well for him. And then I'm all for Echemendia, Cal Happel, part three. Their first two matches were awesome. I'm ready mm-hmm. for a third one. Yeah, I agree. I think I can go back to what uh, Doug Schwab said post-duel um, in Ames when he said, you're going to see some rivalries develop mm-hmm. as these two teams continue to go up against each other. And a finals match between Anthony and Cal Happel would be incredible. It would be so much fun, especially with – the respect these two guys have for each other. So you're going into a match where, yeah, they respect each other, but they're both also aware that <laughs> they want to, you know, take each other down and, and availability. Anthony was very, just such a fun interview because he was just so colorful about how, you know, he's, he's ready. He's zoned in, ready to kill the competition. Mm-hmm. And I want to bring up my favorite thing he said, which was when he compared wrestling to playing video games. Yes. He compared the, the like excitement, the passion, the investment that people feel about sitting down and playing video games. You know, it's something people the joy like to do, they right? get out of it. It's a hobby. It's it's just what people like to do. Well, that type of interest that people have for video games is the interest he has in wrestling, mm-hmm. and that just goes to show that for him, wrestling is literally so much fun. Like he is having fun, and I feel like that's what we think of when you think of David wrestling, right? Like David's mm-hmm. having fun. And then there's guys that just look miserable, just don't look yeah. like they're having a good time. And I really like that from Anthony because it just, I think it just goes to show how much he loves this sport and how much it means to him when he goes out and competes. So it's like every match matters to him, but not because of who the opponent is, but because he just gets to wrestle. And this is his first full college season. So I think he's going to be a really, really fun guy this weekend and someone people should be excited to see compete. So, Yeah, absolutely. It's like you said, he grew up in tournament settings. He wrestled Mm -hmm. in Cuba. They don't have dual meets. They don't know anything about that. In Cuba, it's tournament, 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 tournament. Like this is what him and Younger grew up with. Um, So they're both, and we've seen Younger in tournaments before, but this is what Anthony is built for in tournaments. And he's, and he's excelled at it. Casey Sudarski. Oh my gosh. I'm getting ahead of myself to 157. How dare I? I've been tweeting that I'm ready to talk about Casey Sudarski winning a big job title. So let's talk about it. Casey Sudarski, last season, he did not have the tournament he wanted, like at either of them. And I think that has fueled him in a positive way. Right. So like some guys can have a bad tournament, leaves a sour taste in their mouth and then they're just angry. And I feel like we've seen him grow so much. The coaches have talked about it and I'm excited because I feel like we have seen such positive, like not just growth in him as like an individual and a wrestler. He's clearly taking on slowly taking on more of a leadership role, 
But I feel like in his wrestling as well, which we've talked about prior, and I feel like it's just going to make him have such a more positive experience in terms of seeing results that he wants. And correct me if I'm wrong, didn't Dresser say that he's one of those guys where you kind of have to, instead of getting them amped up, you have to just get them calm? Mm -hmm. Is it Was it about Casey? Yep. 1,000%. Um. (laughs) So yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited for that because he's shown that he can do that. He can stay calm. He can hone it in and win because of it. Yep. And it's Dresser made a point that kind of harkens back to your Etchemendia point about how Etchemendia just views wrestling as fun. Mm-hmm. Um, when talking about Casey Swarovski, Dresser did. Um, Swarovski is competitive enough. He yeah. cares about winning more than enough dresser wants he said this he wants him to just have fun go out there and see how many takedowns you can get um because when you're at this level when you're at the college level everyone's competitive everybody wants to win it's not like high school or middle school where some guys have talent but they don't really care about winning when you're wrestling division one college you care about winning uh so he's like a lot of these guys and Sperdersky's one of them we just got to get him in the mindset of all right let's go out there and have fun like where the results will come if you're out there getting takedowns. If you get seven takedowns in a match, you're going to win that match. So don't right. worry about winning the match when you're wrestling it. Worry about how many takedowns you're going to get. Um, worry about having fun in that way. So I think that's a great perspective from Coach. Um, Casey Spoderski is the one seed, and he has uh, a very clear path to uh, the finals. His toughest match would be in the semifinals um against oklahoma state wrestler who did they did not wrestle Mm -hmm. in the dual meet uh oklahoma state had a different guy out there um so swarovski and jordan williams from oklahoma state have not wrestled uh but i like swarovski in that one jordan williams is nine and six this year uh so i think swarovski's got a pretty clear path to finals and if everything goes chalk and i don't think it will because willie mcdougall does the two seed from oklahoma and it's either going to be him or ty waters from west virginia probably and either one of those guys, I'm sure they had a really tough time seeding that weight because both of those guys could have an argument for two or three seed. Um, so Swiderski will likely get Waters or McDougald, and I like Swiderski in either one of those matches. So um, Echemendia is going to have a real shot at a Big 12 championship. I think Swiderski is the first Iowa State wrestler to be like, okay, he's going to have a real chance. Mm-hmm. Like it's almost not going to be disapp- – I mean, it will be. It might be a little bit disappointing if Swiderski doesn't win a Big 12 championship, assuming health. Obviously, injuries can happen in wrestling. Assuming health, Swiderski has a very, very legitimate chance and probably should win a Big 12 championship. Well, it was like a few weeks ago, um, Aiden and I were sitting here and we were looking at all the rankings. And it in the middle of doing that, it like hit us. We're like, wait, <laughs> there is no reason that Casey Swiderski can't win a Big 12 title. And that was his goal last year, right? Like him and Pinero Johnson were just like hand in hand, like we're going to be freshman Big 12 champions. And unfortunately that didn't happen. But there is truly, I tr- I really think that Casey's in the best position to win that title mm-hmm. in, in all aspects. Like his wrestling is great. His mentality is great. The brackets are working out in his favor. Like, like you said, it, it will be disappointing and not in a, no, no, like, wow, Casey Zorowski failed, but, like, because he's just in such a good place from where we last saw him last season yeah. in March, I should say, because he's been great all season despite the injury. Yeah. So. Zorowski beat the number two seed, Willie McDougald, eight to three in the dual meet. Um, so that's <laughs> another takedown, and you're looking at a major decision, and that's right. against the number two seed. So um, I like Zorowski in this bracket. I mean, he's the one seed, so you have to like that. But even when you look at the entire field, it's like, I'm not sure who trips him up there. I don't think anyone does. Um, If he wrestles like he has all season, he's going to be a Big 12 champion. Yeah. Which is very exciting. Yeah, this is awesome. This is good good stuff for Iowa State and the team race. So Um, now we can talk about Cody Chittum. (laughs) Yes, we can. 157. Cody Chittum, he, you know – Coach reminds us that he's a freshman, (laughs) and I think it's good because sometimes I forget. And, 
you know, he was the number one guy coming in. And I feel like in moments he's just been just a hair off, just a hair, you know, mm-hmm. where we see him lose in sudden victories and we see him lose by just like the smallest of mistake that happened. And I am very curious to see how he does in the tournament. I think when it comes to Cody Chittum, he is a guy that I look at to where I don't know how he's going to do because I think he could go one of two ways. And I don't think either of them are necessarily bad. Um, Obviously we want him to go the route that ultimately leads him to scoring the most points, getting the most team points on the board and being successful. But I think at the same time, some of those mistakes that we've seen cost him matches could kind of come back to bite him in, you know, in these, Mm -hmm. in this tournament. But I think I just come back to, you know, he is a freshman, he is learning, he's going to make mistakes. And as long as he, you know, get some team points. I think that will be a good tournament. And for someone like Cody Chittum, he's obviously, he's a guy who's probably like, I'm wrestling to be a champion, which is yeah. good. Uh, you want guys that think that way, but I don't and know. What's, what's your thoughts on it? That's the thing is he has the ability to be a big 12 champion. We saw him beat um, the number three guy in the country for Arizona mm-hmm. state. What was right. his name? Uh, I forgot his name. Oh, Jacory Teamer. Okay. I was like, um, all I can think of is. Yeah. He Go beat ahead. number three guy in the country. So, like, we've seen him beat the top of the top. Right. Um, and in his first round match, he's got Brooks Gable from Air Force, who is one in 17. Easy. <laughs> I am unsure of why Chittum got matched up with him and Vinny Zerbin, <laughs> who's the number one seed, did not. Because Zerbin's got 11 and 6 Sloan Swan from Wyoming. 11 and 6 is a way better record than 1 and 17. Right. So um, I'm looking at bonus points in that first round match. Um, <laughs> but then after that, it gets tough real right. quick because he, a second round match would likely be against Missouri's Brock Mahler, who is very good. Mm-hmm. Um, they did not wrestle in the dual meet because he stayed in Missouri for some reason. Who knows why? He did not get stabbed. So um, he doesn't have sick. that excuse. Could have been sick. He could have been sick. Who knows? Uh, but that's going to be a really tough match for Cody Chittum. And if he does manage to get past that one, then he's got the number one seed, Vinny Zerbin. So um, Cody Chittum's the four seed. The Big 12 um, had, has six qualif- uh, automatic qualifier allocations for 157. So, and he's one or if he somehow falls short, which I don't see him doing that. I see him finishing the top six, but if he mm-hmm. doesn't, for some reason, he is one that would probably get in that large bid. Um, so while I re- and it's really hard to know what to expect with Chittam. It's with all freshmen. It's, it's tough, especially true freshmen. It's like mm-hmm. Swarovski and Panero last year. Swarovski didn't win a Big 12 championship, didn't look that great, and Panero did. And then at the NCAA tournament, they flip-flopped. Swarovski mm-hmm. was almost an All-American, and Panero lost in like two rounds. So just, you don't know what you're getting with first freshman all the time. Chittum has a legitimate shot to wrestle in the semifinals against the number one seed. He could also lose his second round match against Brock Mahler. Um, so that's going to be a, an interesting wait to watch because – there's opportunity for Iowa state to pull away from Missouri in this one, because if Chittum does beat Mahler, that's team points. Missouri is not getting. Mm-hmm. And then when you're wrestling on the backside of bracket, you only get half the amount of points. So Mahler would only be scoring half team points while meanwhile, um, Chittum would be scoring full team points. So that's going to be an important match for the team race. It's also just going to be important for Chittum to see what he can do in the tournament. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like if I had to pick a guy to be in this kind of situation where he's looking at a rematch with Brock Mahler, I I like this for him. (laughs) If I look at the other side of it, which I know, obviously, when you look at team standings, you would prefer not (laughs) to have this. But I feel like because he lost the way that he did, because of who we've grown to know he is, like what kind of competitor he is, I feel like he would feed off of this. Like I feel like something like this is going to make him I, – I feel like it's going to channel that like <laughs> kind of like that psycho side of him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, like that side that Coach talks about how he wants to be so dead <laughs> after yes. his matches because it, it signals to him that he truly gave it his all instead of winning with ease, <laughs> which mm-hmm. I find so interesting. So 
I think at the end of the day, we'll probably see Brock Mahler be who he's going to go up against. And I look forward to seeing how he bounces back because at the end of the day, it's not a duel. It's a tournament. It's in a different setting. Their match is going to be going at the same time as several others. The atmosphere mm -hmm. is very chaotic. And I don't know. I'm excited to see him pushed in that way. So, and again, hopefully, hoping Missouri loses out on team points here. So, but we shall see. We shall see. Um, 165. I, <laughs> I don't know when Dresser said this in his availability, but he said something like, you guys are the reporter. So your job is to talk about those like key matches, but he obviously doesn't want to get ahead of himself for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. We know how crazy March can be. There's several matches we can look back on where guys that were supposed to be in the finals didn't make it to the finals. Um, but we're obviously all sitting and waiting and hoping for David Carr, Keegan O'Toole in the, in the finals match. Mm -hmm. um, talk us through, you know, the side of the bracket that David's on. He's the number two seed. So obviously him and Keegan are opposite of each other. Um, yeah. Tell us your thoughts on that. Yep. So uh, David Carr gets a first round match, which is awesome because that's guaranteed tech fall or pin. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just what it's going to be. He's got Cal Baptist, Mateo Della Pina, and I apologize, Mateo, but it's going to go very poorly for you. You're <laughs> not going to have fun and you're going to be wrestling back after that. He's going to get Tanner cook from South Dakota state. Most likely either that or Jack Thompson, Jack Thompson's a guy he's beaten by tech fall before Tanner cook. I don't know that they've wrestled, but again, you're staring at a tech fall again. So again, mm -hmm. those are two matches right off the gate for Iowa State where you're getting bonus points and probably a lot of bonus points. Um, in the semifinal match, you're looking at Peyton Hall, most likely, or Kale Carlson from Oklahoma. And um, we've seen David Carr beat both those guys this year. Uh, actually, I lied. We haven't. He didn't wrestle the Oklahoma guy. They missed out on a different guy. Um, but against West Virginia's Peyton Hall, David Carr won 10-5. to 5. And it's actually 10 to 2, but David Carr decided to let him up and then try to get another takedown. And in that attempt of a takedown, Peyton Hall got a takedown. Um, but so the match wasn't as close as the score indicates. And really, the score indicates that this could be another opportunity for bonus points. Like David Carr might bonus point his way to the finals. That's a very real possibility. Um, and if that happens, oh boy. Uh, well, that's and then huge for the team race. Huge. And that's that's my whole thing. I want David Carr getting as many team points in those first two matches for sure, and maybe three matches um, to get Iowa State out in front there. Because on the other side of the bracket is where Missouri and Oklahoma State are. So obviously Missouri, Keegan O'Toole, number one seed, he has a bye in the first round. And this is where Missouri, like Iowa State last year, got shafted. Uh, mm -hmm. Because Keegan O'Toole is pinning that first round opponent. I don't care who it is. Um, it's just, he's going to get pinned by Keegan O'Toole. So second round matches against, um, Jackson Garlett from Utah Valley, who is 0 and 10 this year. Don't know how that happens <laughs> or Cooper Voorhees, who is 10 and 14. So like, that's probably going to for sure be bonus points, probably pin or tech fall similar to David. Um, and then after that, he's probably got Isaac Olenek from Oklahoma state who spent part of this year as the number three seat or the number three ranked wrestler in the nation. Um, then Isaac ran into David Carr and a few other guys and realized he wasn't that guy, but Isaac is a real competitor here. And like, we've seen Keegan O'Toole struggle with Peyton Hall. Peyton Hall was beating Keegan O'Toole earlier this year, like six to two at one point. And then Keegan O'Toole came back and won like seven to six or something like that. Yeah. But we've seen Keegan struggle at times this year. So if Isaac comes out to wrestle and he wrestles like he was at the middle point of this year, that's going to be a tough match for O'Toole. Whereas we've seen David essentially dominate Peyton Hall. Um, I actually like David's path better than O'Toole's path, which is interesting that O'Toole is the one seed. Um, but let's assume that they, let's assume that O'Toole wins that match against Olenek, which he probably will. And let's assume that David Carr, he's, he's probably going to win against Peyton Hall. Let's assume he wins that match. Then you do finally get your O'Toole Carr match. And everything we've heard out of the Iowa State wrestling room is this is the best David Carr has ever looked. We saw a tweet from Panera Johnson over the weekend saying no one's beating this guy. 
Uh, and Panero's a Big 12 champion, right? We've seen him wrestle and compete at an incredibly high level. Um, even dressers saying David's the most locked in he's ever been. He's the healthiest he's ever been. He's feeling the best he ever has. His weight's great. He's feeling energized. Uh, and he's like, I know other guys are good, but I'm taking David Carr. And I agree. I mean, we've seen, we saw David Carr beat O'Toole twice last year. Um, the only time he didn't is when, um, and Dresser said this, when Carr spent too much time pleasing fans mm -hmm. in last year's NCAA tournament. Um, in between rounds, David Carr was signing autographs and shaking hands and being his charismatic self. And Dresser said, in those moments, Carr has to be more selfish, which is going to be really hard for him to do because that's not Carr's personality. No, it's not. Um, so, but we, when Carr is right, which we've seen him right, he's the best in the nation. Mm -hmm. it, he just is. And everything that we're hearing out of the wrestling room is Carr is feeling great. So give me David Carr in the Keegan O'Toole, David Carr part four, and let's see what they can do at NCAs after that. Yeah, I think that as we've said in weeks past, David, everything David does is, does is very much like with intention. Like there is an intention behind it. Um, he thinks through everything he does. He's very much like, again, it goes back to, like Anthony said, you know, wrestling for him is – fun. It's mm -hmm. fun for David. David loves being an entertainer. He loves going in there with a plan to make people feel excited and look forward to his matches. And I think that <clears throat> if coach is saying it, like, you know, maybe he was a little too distracted with the sideshow of what it means to be a really talented wrestler. I can guarantee you anyone who's going to take dresser's advice about, Hey, let's actually not do that this time. And let's do this instead that he's going to go and take that and do it like extremely well. I can, mm -hmm. I can only imagine how like zoned in David is about this being his final big 12 um, championship. This is also um, an opportunity for him and Dayton fix to write their names in the history books. Cause they're both buying to be the, um, only one and two uh, wrestlers that are five-time conference champions, Big 12 conference champions. So I'm confident Dane Fix is going to do it. Yep. And I'm sure David is not far behind him. So I just, I mean, I feel like for Dresser to say, like, he is better than ever, it it means something. Just because it David's does. been, David is so consistently good and has been since he arrived. Like the times that David has done something wrong is very rare. And the way Dresser talks about other wrestlers and the way he talks about David is very different because of, it doesn't take much to push David because David's already pushing himself 10 times harder, right? That's mm -hmm. why I remember I asked him like, what is it like coaching David Carr? Because you obviously coach him differently. And for Dresser to say it, it means something. And he's seeing something we're not seeing. And I'm excited to see it on display because this is where you got to leave it all on the mat, right? Not to be cliche, but that's where we're at. So <laughs> I'm excited. It's going to be a very interesting tournament. And you brought up Keegan O'Toole's side of the bracket. And I want to be crazy. <laughs> Just okay. say that I, I could, like, what are the chances that Isaac from, um, how do you say his last name? You, you say it well. I think it's Olenek. Pretty Olenek. sure. Um, like, what are the chances that he does get one on O'Toole? It's a possibility. Like, I don't think it's Isaac's a realm. very good wrestler. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's out of this realm. And that, again, that's not an insult to Keegan O'Toole. I have saying his praises and I will continue to sing, like, sing them. He's an incredible athlete. He's a number one seed. I mean, you know, like, but I could, I could see it. I could see it being one of those matches that surprises us. Yeah. Because, like Isaac is the number four seed in the Big 12 tournament, and he spent time this year as the number three overall guy in the country. Mm -hmm. He has shown high-end ability. There's a path for him to beat O'Toole. And we've seen O'Toole struggling against Peyton Hall. Right. So, like, Keegan O'Toole is not infallible. Um, he seems like it sometimes like David Carr, they seem infallible, but then 
if you match it up there against the right guy, things can happen, especially right. with Otuba. He does like to roll around on the mat a little bit. So if you get mm -hmm. caught in the wrong position, that's not great. I mean, that's what that's what happened in Sudden Victory last year in the Big 12 championship is David was in on a single leg. O'Toole tried to roll around. Carr caught a cradle and pinned him. Uh, so when you do the things that O'Toole does, that can expose you sometimes. And we're not saying it's going to happen. Right. Like could. truly we're preparing for Keegan O'Toole, David Carr, Sunday mm -hmm. night. Correct. Like that's what we're looking ahead towards, which I, I agree with coach. It, it is our job to go there, but sometimes I do myself get, I'm, I'm naturally a superstitious sports fan, like with anything. So it does make me nervous, but, but I don't know. It's something in my guts telling me that Isaac could, could do something crazy, but we'll, we'll get there that. when we get there. <laughs> um, 174. Speaking of guys that like to roll around. Oh, geez. <laughs> MJ Gaetan. I feel like this could be like a Marcus Coleman. Um, mm -hmm. I don't remember what see, what year was it where he was just pinning guys left and right through. Was it like, year, the first year you're All-American. Okay. It's like, was it? I'm pretty sure. Not his senior know. season, but maybe the, se Correct. the season before. Yep. Yes. Yes. I could just see that. Mm -hmm. But he also makes me nervous. <laughs> Very nervous. And coach even said it today. Like, uh, Gaetan has taken down 40, has gotten takedowns 40 times. He's mm -hmm. been taken down 18 times, which on the surface, pretty good. Mm -hmm. But Gaetan's a better wrestler than that. Like, mm -hmm. he doesn't need to be taken down 18 times. That's not, he's better than that. Uh, and he is the number two seed yep. in the Big 12 tournament. He does have a buy. Unfortunately, I'd like to see him get a first round match because it'd probably be a pin. Um, but that second round match is likely against Gavin Sachs from North Dakota State, who he did not wrestle this year. Um, but I mean, I'd like Gaetan in that matchup. And then after that, he's either got uh, Braden Thompson from Oklahoma State or Tate Piccolo from Oklahoma. He beat Thompson in some victory and he pinned Piccolo. And I mean, it's a tough draw. Those matches aren't going to be easy, mm -hmm. but Gaetan's already proven he can beat them. And then right. you're in the finals, probably against Cade DeVos from South Dakota State. Um, but that, that again, is a, it's a one seed, and this might be the shakiest one seed of the tournament besides maybe 125. Um, because Cade DeVos is good. I'm not saying he's not. But uh, Jared Sema from Northern Iowa is good. Peyton Mako mm -hmm. from Missouri is very good. So um, I could see one of those guys pulling an upset and be the one that uh, Gaetan potentially faces in the finals. Gaetan's got to get there first. He's got to beat either Bray Braden Thompson or Tate Piccolo again. But we've seen him do it, and I think there's a very real shot. And again, we're talking about a freshman. Mm -hmm. Similar to Evan Frost and similar to um, uh, okay. Cody Chittum. These are freshmen. We've seen Gaetan do some crazy things and some really dumb things. <laughs> so who knows what he does, but he's earned this number two seed. So he gets to fight for his path to the finals. And it's a relatively favorable one because he is the two seed and we'll see what he can do. Yeah. I mean, in the notes from good old Andy, he did make a note that four of his last five wins were against ranked opponents. Mm -hmm. So he, it's not like he's had a cakewalk the last few weeks. No, he's wrestled good guys all so, year. Yep. Yeah. I think MJ's a, a wild one. <laughs> he is. And I look forward to it. I look forward to having my blood pressure skyrocket. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh. I just feel like he is one of those guys who's just been really electric and probably will feed off this environment. Mm -hmm. So that'll be fine. That'll be fine. What a young team. Super young team. That's what's really exciting. Which ironically now <laughs> Will Feldkamp, who's old. <laughs> he is old. He is going into his final um, postseason of his career. He's, you know, he's graduating. Iowa State got one season with him, which he made quick impact, which is awesome. It's what he was brought in to do, right? Um, he 
he got the worst bracket, in my opinion. Yeah, he draw. got a terrible draw. So he um, got to scroll down here. So Will Feldkamp is the number five seed. He'll have a first round bye, and he will most likely go against Colton Hawks from Missouri. He lost to him, unfortunately, um, just a few weeks ago. So a rematch there. I feel like Will's one of those guys where I know some fans have been a little hard on him just because maybe sometimes he just really hasn't had the result he wanted. But Feldkamp is also one of those guys that, you know, he is older. He is more seasoned. So I think he's able to realize what mistake he made and how to turn it around. And coach said that when he went up against Missouri, he really wasn't at 100% yet. Mm -hmm. He's at like 80, coach said, 80%. And Feldkamp in availability was very much like, you know, everyone's hurt. So, <laughs> so at least we know he has the mentality that it, it isn't necessarily mentally holding him back. So I'm hoping that maybe he'll be more like near a hundred percent come Saturday mm -hmm. and can come out on top of that one. But even if he does, he unfortunately would get Parker Kuttkaisen. He's on the yep. same side as the bracket as Parker Kuttkaisen and, that's just a tough draw because Parker's like unstoppable. <laughs> yep, he sure is. He's the number one guy in the country. He's the heavy, heavy favorite to win the championship. <laughs> so so that's just, that sucks. <laughs> yep, that's a tough one. Um, but going to your point again of Will Feldkamp and him getting things right for the postseason, mm -hmm. that match against Colton Hawks, he was the better wrestler. I think yeah. everyone who watched that match saw that and felt that is that Feldkamp went for a throw when he shouldn't have and ended mm -hmm. up on his own back. Um, but he fought back. He was within a takedown. Um, so he's down 7-0 early because of that. And he fought back to come back within a point. And he went for something last second, didn't get it. But he looked like the better wrestler throughout that match. So if he cleans up that one mistake... He probably beats Colton Hawks. Um, but then, yeah, like you said, he's got Parker Kekhaiz in the second round, which sucks. You're not going to, he's not going to beat him. I'm sorry. They didn't wrestle in the regular season. That was when Feldkamp was out with the injury. Um, so Iowa State sent out Tate Noctaborn against Parker. Um, so Will and Parker have not wrestled, but I don't think that matters. I think Parker wins pretty handily. Um, so Will's going to have to fight back on the backside of the bracket. Um, I don't think it'll come into play. But the Big 12 did uh, have five automatic qualifying spots for 184. Mm -hmm. um, so he does have to wrestle to a seed to earn an automatic qualifying spot. I see that happening. Um, I think he's probably, I mean, really, if I'm being honest, he, he could finish third. And mm -hmm. I don't think that'd be surprising to me at all. Um, so... And if he loses and somehow doesn't finish fifth, which, again, I'm expecting him to... He's another guy I would expect to get in that large spot. So, well, and I feel like this is one of those scenarios that kind of goes back to when we go into duels where it's kind of lopsided in some matches, and you just hope guys can score bonus points and then also avoid giving up bonus points. If Will Feldkamp can at least go into this matchup against Colton Hawks and beat him so that mm -hmm. Missouri doesn't get those points, then you have contributed exactly what your team needed in this scenario. Like truly, yep, because sure. we're all hoping it's expect it's being expected that Parker Kutkaisen wins that weight. So it goes to you and I, that's great. That's exactly what we want. We don't mm -hmm. want anyone else to get those points, especially not Oklahoma state, which is what you would anticipate being um, Parker Kaizen's opponent, Dustin Plott. Mm -hmm. He's the number two seed. He's 24 and two this season. That's what we're anticipating for the finals match. So huge you and I fans. Yep. At, which, at specific weights, huge you and I fans. <laughs> which isn't hard. Isn't hard to do. <laughs> no, Doug Schwab's awesome. So, so and I, I'm excited. I wins. You might know off the top. Sometimes you just know things. But when's the last time they had a Big 12 champion? It, oh, it was did Drew Foster win it? I was going to say. I, Drew Foster was a national champion, but I don't know. if Did he win a Big 12 championship that year? I can't remember. Um, I can definitely. That would be the first up, one that but... comes to mind would be Drew Foster. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, yes, he's a two-time Big 12 champion. Okay. Okay, I was like, I thought I'd seen something on Twitter that was like, he's going to – Parker Kirkheisen's going for history here, and I, I want to figure out what that is. But regardless, absolutely rooting for him. And he has one more season. Is Which what is I was unbelievable. Told. He I does know. have one more season. Yeah. I know. Crazy. Anyways, <laughs> not to get into a you and I tangent over here, but no, yeah, definitely rooting for Parker Kaizen. Great guy. Um, he deserves it. He's earned it, in my opinion, even though he hasn't wrestled this weekend yet. But um, moving on, 197, Julian Broderson. He is unseated. Mm hmm. So I think what we're really looking at is, you know, hoping for the best, hoping for yep. him to have the best tournament he can, enjoy what matches he has left. He has a first round match, which is against West Virginia. Um, I cannot remember what the score was of that match. Did they Cooley beat him 10 to four? Okay. I was like, what was that score? But that was the first match that Julian Broderson really opened up. Like mm -hmm. he got close to several takedowns and then ended up getting taken down himself. Um, so that was like the first turnaround of Coach Stress was saying, we're seeing a better Julian Broderson. Um, but I mean, obviously losing 10 to four is not good. Yeah. And maybe he channels, you know, my favorite thing to reference when it comes to um, Kai, uh, oh my gosh, Kaivin. Um, about wrestling free. Like maybe this is where Julian just wrestles free and he just throws it out there and I hope he has a good time. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it just, this is the end of his career, right? Like this is where it ends before he goes off and really starts his life with his family. So hoping for the best. Yep. <laughs> that's that's uh, my motto there. <laughs> yeah. If he does win, if he does beat Austin Cooley, which is possible, mm -hmm. he would get number one Tanner Sloan of South Dakota State. Yep. And he's not going to win that match. Tanner Sloan is very, very good. Yeah. Um, so Julian, unfortunately, would lose in the second round, and then he'd have to wrestle back. Uh, the Big 12 did get six allocations at 197. I guess that's not totally out of the question for Julian, but as yeah. an wrestler, he's got a very big uphill battle to claim that spot. Right. So um, unfortunately, and he's definitely not getting an at-large spot. That's not going to happen either. So, unfortunately, Julian's going to probably have to wrestle the term of his life to get a, a qualifying spot. But uh, if he just wins a few matches, score a few team points, like win that first match and give Iowa State a team point. Mm -hmm. Contribute that way. And then if you uh, lose to Tanner Stone after that, see if he can't win a consolation match. So, um, it's a tough, tough, really tough draw for him. But that's what you get when you're an unseated wrestler. Um, so, we'll see what he can do. And it's a tough way. I mean, the top three it guys is. are literally Tanner Sloan. And then you have um, Stephen Buchanan, who's with Oklahoma. He's 18 and one. And then you have Rocky Elam, who's number yeah. three. Like that is a tough yeah. weight. So, yeah. All three just... of those guys are all Americans. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So tough draw there, but yeah, just throw it out there. You have nothing to lose. No. Like this is, this is it. Um, but now on to heavyweight. Do you want to show us your shirt? Let's do it. <laughs> so we're changing the younger Bastida to hype train to the younger Bastida yeah. hype plane. We're going to be flying, <laughs> uh, air Bastido all the way to Tulsa and then to Kansas city. Yep. <laughs> um, he is the number two seed in the bracket. And that's exactly what we expected. Wyatt Hendrickson is the one seed. Zach Elam is the three seed. Mm -hmm. Um, and once again, Younger Bastida gets a first round match against someone named Xavier Doolin from Northern Colorado, who's going to have a really tough time. He's not mm -hmm. going to have fun. Um, younger Bastida is going to win that match for sure by major decision, probably by tech fall. Um, and then after that, he gets West Virginia's y, or Michael Wolfgram, who he already beat by tech fall earlier this year. So I'm expecting, again, at minimum, major decision but probably tech fall in the first two matches for younger Bastida. Get on the map, get off the map by the end of the second period, save some energy. Um, because after that, he's probably got Zach Elam from Missouri, who was undefeated, but then younger Bastida absolutely broke his will and, um, and he <laughs> desired to wrestle. 
and beat him by major decision, literally drove his face straight into the ground. And yeah, no, it was a very fun match. And I still think about that often. So he'd have him <laughs> in the semifinals. Um, and again, I like that match. I don't know that I'm expecting another major decision from younger, but we've mm-hmm. seen it be possible. So, and Dresser said it today when I asked him about um, the younger Bastida match and the potential matchup against Zach Elam again. He's like, if we get to that match, because like Jackie said earlier, we reporters love to talk about these big matches that we see. And Dresser's like, let's take it one match at a time. Um, <laughs> but if he gets to that match, uh, he's like, I want to see the exact same thing. I want Younger to get out there and score early and um, keep putting it on him. Don't make it a one score match. There's no need for um, that that to be a one score match like younger can open that up. So um, I love that mentality. That makes me super happy. And then in all likelihood, Wyatt Hendrickson will be in the finals because there's, there's a significant drop off between Zach Elam and the four and five seed who are Josh Heinzelman and Connor Doucette. Um, Those guys are not in the same level of Zach Elam who probably isn't in the same level of younger Bastida and uh, Wyatt Hendrickson will pin his way potentially to the finals. Uh, Wyatt Hendrickson leads the NCAAs in pins this I'm year. Glad you bring that up. <laughs> uh, he was the NCAA pin leader, not just in heavyweight of all weights. Um, he is a different kind of guy. He is a full size heavyweight. I wouldn't be surprised to learn that he cuts weight to make weight, which is 285. He's massive. Um, he's he's huge. He's like six five, six six. If like I'm wearing this shirt that has younger Bastida picking up um, an unnamed wrestler <laughs> who might wrestle in the Big Ten. Um, if he picks up Wyatt Hendrickson, I might pass out on the spot. I might pass out Matt like, side. <laughs> I, I don't I don't see that happening. With Zach Elam's like, yeah, he can pick him up because Zach Elam's not a huge heavyweight. <clears throat> Wyatt if that happens, I will lose all sense of being and just probably run around screaming. Um, that said, <laughs> well, well, for context, yeah. I, I looked up Wyatt Hendrickson's name on Twitter because I their web the Air Force website isn't my favorite. But for context, in March, so last season, I forgot about this, but in March of 2023. Um, Wyatt Hendrickson was Air Force's first All-American in 20 years. I'm happy to share um, some other stuff, but just go back and watch some of their matches. And I'm talking um, Wyatt Hendrickson. He wrestled against um, Greg Kirkfleet back in November of 2023. You can go Mm -hmm. back and watch that match and see what Younger's future looks like. And I just – there. I am just so excited to see this match. I've talked about it all season, and I was so mad when he, when Wyatt Hendrickson did not compete in uh, Vegas just mm-hmm. because Younger is so dominant, and he is nuts. <laughs> He's crazy confident, and I love it. And the fact that he can lift people up is insane. But when it comes to just like the field, like you said, there is a big drop-off, but even then – I still think there's a drop off after younger. Like I still think there's like a, I still think there's a distance between Zach Elam and younger. And when I look at the best, it really does come down to Greg Greg Kirkfleet and Wyatt Hendrickson. And I just am excited to see younger in a position to go up against someone who probably isn't scared of him, who probably isn't shaken by him in any sense. Like I'm excited Mm -hmm. to see a confident, guy like Wyatt Hendrickson go up against younger Bastida. And we haven't seen Wyatt Hendrickson all season, but we know he's pinning his way through the country. (laughs) And he's a heavyweight, a heavyweight. And he's a heavy, heavyweight. Yeah. Like we talk, I seriously, I'm not kidding you. The first time I saw him in person, I was like, my God, that is a gigantic man. (laughs) Like, holy crap. And he's not fitting in a fighter pilot cockpit like that's not his role in the air force he's not fitting in one of those he's doing something else with the air force this is just yeah this is just going to be really exciting because younger has just been so dominant that it makes me think of david and that i look Mm -hmm. forward to every opportunity we get to see david wrestle but i get extra excited when i know it's someone that can like 
really pushed David. And that's been his, that's been Keegan, right? Like Keegan has beat David. We've seen that these two guys match up really well. Well, I'm excited to see us find that for younger because we haven't yet. Mm-hmm. Like no one's made him sweat. Nope. And who knows if Wyatt Hendrickson's going to make him sweat. I'm sure he'd tell us, no, I'm not sweating. <laughs> he, I mean, he tweeted that graphic. Yep, he did. That was an incredible graphic that Aiden <laughs> pulled up last week. If you haven't, go to Younger Bastida's Twitter page, and I think it's probably his latest tweet, um, and it is a wonderful tweet. Um, but going into the potential matchup against uh, of the potential matchup against Wyatt Hendrickson with Younger <laughs> Bastida, um, like I said, I don't see him picking him up. That's I think that's too much to ask. He might hurt himself. <laughs> he probably would. Um, I want to see Younger use his quickness, which he's used against guys like Colton Schultz, who again, full size heavyweight. Mm-hmm. Um, because you you can probably physically pick those guys up because you can um, squat more than two eighty five, but uh, weights are just sitting there. When you're <laughs> trying to fight against someone, it's different. Um, so I want to see him use his quickness a little bit, use those fakes. Um, probably try to stay out of hand fighting with Wyatt Hendrickson. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that that ends super well for you. Um, we saw younger choose down against Zach Elam and it worked out really well. Say glorious. <laughs> um, again, I'm really nervous about him potentially choosing down or getting taken down on a bad shot against mm-hmm. Wyatt Hendrickson because he does punish people when he's on top. That's how he's so good at pinning people. He gets on top and he just pins him. He has that pinning combination where he's bigger and stronger than everybody else. And he's like, nope, you're going to go to your back now. Sorry. Um, so there, there are positions that Younger needs to stay out of. Um, I think getting in a hand fight is one of those. I think, man, if you have choice, you might choose neutral. We'll see. Younger Younger's grown by leaps and bounds on bottom. He truly has. So maybe he chooses bottom and he makes me look like a fool again. <laughs> but um, I want to see Younger use a lot of his quickness, stay in space, uh, get some fakes and see if he can get White to react a little bit, lean forward a little bit, and then try to go behind. Um, because there are ways that Younger wins. And we saw, like Jackie said, Greg Kirkfleet and Wyatt wrestled in a match earlier this year. And I think Greg won by tech fault, didn't he? Yeah, it was like 18 to 2. So um, I've said, and Kyvin said when he was on this show, that Younger is Greg's Cuban twin. Mm-hmm. Like they're the exact same wrestler, just one was born in America and one was born in Cuba. So, and I'm guessing, I, I didn't ask, we didn't talk to Younger today and I didn't ask Dresser, but I would bet that Younger has watched that match to see what Greg did mm-hmm. and he's going to try to replicate it. Because he can. He has the physical tools to do that. So Absolutely. Um, that's going to be really interesting to watch if it happens, assuming it happens. It just it is going to be a really good match, and I want it so bad. So bad. <laughs> like, I am ready for it. <laughs> yeah, that no tool. Those are the two matches I need to happen. Yes, and... Like I said, when I think of Wyatt Hendrickson, I've only been around him once. Yeah, once, maybe twice. Um, He's always just like walking around. He's smiling. He was all chipper when he won his like most dominant wrestler of the year award, which he deserved it. But like, he just seems like such a go happy, lucky guy, (laughs) just happy all the time. Kind of like a golden retriever. His personality when what little time I was around him, he reminds me of a golden retriever. And Younger is so nice. He's the nicest guy when he comes in for interviews. But I don't think of him as a golden retriever. He scares no. me a little. And I he's love got it. that pit bull in him. <laughs> yeah. Like Make, if you're if you're good tweet. with a pit bull, they'll be super happy and cordial with you. But if you get on a pit bull's bad side, it's gonna end poorly. But yeah, I mean, don't let the golden retriever fool you either. Um yeah. Air Force shared on Twitter uh just the other day that um Wyatt Hendrickson is one of the Olympic trial qualifiers. Mm. So go compete for Olympic spot. Mm -hmm. So these are, yeah, I just think younger Wyatt Hendrickson, Greg Kirkfleet are just like light years away. They are truly like the new generation of like heavyweights. And next season, I'm so excited to have Colton Schultz in the big 12. 
Yeah. Bring them yep. in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm excited. I think this is the most confident. I, I thought I was confident last season, but sitting here today, I feel that this is the best place that Iowa State has been in to actually win a Big 12 title. Like, they have a legitimate chance, not just like a, oh, I feel good about it. No, we mm -hmm. have, like, stats on a paper <laughs> that tell us that Iowa State can win this. Yeah. And I just, yeah, I'm just, I'm ready for it. I'm excited for wrestling. I'm I'm ready for it to be 10 a.m. on Saturday. Yep. Yeah. No, it, Iowa State has a very legitimate chance to win. It's going to come down to bonus points, most likely. It's going to come down to, can a guy like Julian Broderson upset a person? Can Kyson Terrakeen win a few matches? Um, like those, those two things will go a long way in determining the team race. And then, I mean, the bigger picture of Big 12s is, how many guys do qualify for NCAs? And at minimum, Iowa State's getting eight in. And if Kyson wrestles well, you get nine. I don't see Julian qualifying, unfortunately, for him. But eight or nine guys you send to the NCAAs, that's enough to win a team trophy. So yeah. we'll see what they do. Tulsa is going to be a lot of fun. Jackie's going to be there. I'll be watching on TV. So, yeah. Big shout out to Fairway. They're literally the reason we get to podcast every week. And they're the reason I'm going to be headed to Tulsa for my third year in a row. I am super pumped. I'm stuck in Tulsa the next, what was it, till 2028? Mm -hmm. So yep. might as well keep making myself at home downtown. But, <laughs> like, Bye, yeah, condo. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, guys, this is all courtesy of Fairway. Um, I have content coming on Cycle Fanatic and I'll be tweeting updates all weekend as I'm down there. So yeah, I'm just more excited. Any final thoughts, Ben, before we close it out? Get your younger Bastida shirts. Yeah, head over to the Cyclone Fanatic shop, order your shirts. If you order them now and you're headed to Kansas City this year, you'll definitely get it before then. So yeah. Yeah, that, that's all I got. Aiden's gonna yell at us because we went way over time. That's all right. That's what that's what he gets for not being here. <laughs> yeah, he's not here to signal that we've gone over. <laughs> As always, thanks for listening, guys. We'll be back to, I, I mean, react. Yeah, we'll be back to react to all the action.